Okay, so this video uh, is going over uh, our second section in, in the introduction to probability unit, uh, odds. Uh, some people find it a little weird, but it's actually quite simple, quite straightforward. Uh, it's just another way of communicating probability where you look at how many times more probable is something happening versus not happening. That's really what it is. Okay, there's odds in favor, there's odds against, and so on. But really, a lot of people mix up probability and odds. Odds are like, a, how many times more likely is it for me to die in a car crash than it is to not die in a car crash? So when we say odds, it'll be like, one, it's not going to be one in a million because one in a million is a probability. It would be one in 999,999. Okay, which means it's 900,999 times more probable for you to live or not die than it is for you to die in a car crash or something. I shouldn't use that as an example. It's very morbid. But either way, that's the idea. Okay, so odds again are another way of expressing a level of confidence in an event that an event will occur. It uses a ratio or yeah, usually it's a ratio in lowest terms. Uh, and it looks at the probability of an event happening versus the probability of it not happening. So happening versus not happening or probability of A and probability of A primed. Remember, the complement is something not happening. If the probability of A is it happening, probability of A, uh, probability of it not happening is the probability of A primed. Okay, so here we see the probability of A on the top, probability of A primed on the bottom of that expression. Now here it's written as a fraction, but generally it's also written as a ratio. So look at it at one or the other, and they're very often um, confused. So usually when we, write, when we write odds, we usually use uh, uh, ratios. Okay, one to four, five to seven, whatever it may be. These are the same ratios that you see uh, in uh, the racetrack. Okay, in the racetrack, if you've ever gone to the racetrack, you really shouldn't because it's gambling, but either way, if you do go to the racetrack for fun or if you look at Proline and places like that, they'll be able to tell you the, the odds related to a payout because what's happening is more or less probable than it shouldn't be happening. But anyway, here it is. Okay, so this is a bit about probability. I'll fly there. Um, so the probability is the probability of A or the probability of A primed. Okay, the nice thing about A, it happening, and A primed not happening, or its complement, is they both have the same denominator. Okay, they're both out of the same total because it's the same process that's happening. So if the probability of A is, I don't know, rolling a one, then the probability of A prime, and so the probability is one out of six for rolling a one, the probability of A prime would be not rolling a one, which would be five out of six. And one out of six and five out of six both have denominators of six because there's six total outcomes. It's still the same deal, still the same scenario. So if we take them, of course, you'll see that NS cancels out. And so what you'll see when you see odds are two things. One, you can see the probability of A happening versus the probability of A not happening, or the number of ways in which A could happen over the number of ways in which A cannot happen. Okay, or the number of ways of, of A happening and the number of ways of A not happening. Okay, so it can actually be a counting principle rather than a probability principle when you're looking at these two ideas. It's actually quite useful then because if we look at NA and N, NA primed, those two add up to the total. Okay, so that'll help us do probabilities a little bit later on. But anyway, uh, let's look at some examples more than anything else. Okay, so here, a messy drawer contains three red socks, five white socks, and four black socks. Okay, so a total of boop, 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 12 socks. Okay, what are the odds in favor of randomly selecting a sock? Now, first of all, odds in favor are the probability of it happening versus not happening, or the number of ways in which it happening versus not happening. So in favor is happen over not happen. Against is not happen over happen. Okay, so there's favor, against, or for, or against. Okay, I will tell you this, that when people just talk about the odds in general, they're always looking at the odds in favor. Okay, that's the underlying assumption if you're talking about odds. That's the, the fallback. If someone just says, oh, what are the odds? Then it's going to be in favor rather than against. Okay, so anyway. So here we go. Uh, so what are the odds in favor of selecting a red sock? Well, the number of ways in which we can pick a red sock is 3 out of a total of 12, or the probability is 3 out of 12. The probability of not getting a red sock, or in other words, getting a white and a black sock, is going to be 9 out of 12, because 5 and 4 is 9 out of 12, 9 out of 12. We know these two guys have to add up to 12 out of 12, okay? So odds in favor are going to be 3 out of 12, happening, red, versus 9 out of 12, not happening, okay? Or if I reduce it, first of all, the 12 cancels, and then the 3 to 9 reduces to a 1 to 3. We always write in lowest terms where both numbers are whole numbers. 
Okay, and it's usually the way that it's communicated on mass. Although if you play some gambling games like Proline and things like that, the odds will be expressed as decimals. But either way, generally the convention is uh, to use whole numbers for both. Okay, so what are the odds in favor? Odds in favor of selecting a black sock. So we look at the probability of black and the probability of not black. We compare them to each other, write them in a ratio, and then we get the final answer. So the probability of black is 4 to 12. The probability of not black, I can go ahead and figure out from up here if I want to, but it's also 1 minus 4 out of 12 or 12 out of 12 minus 4 out of 12, which is 8 out of 12. So now I've got 4 out of 12, probability of black. Probability of not black, 8 out of 12, it's complement. Okay, you notice the 4 and the 8 add up to 12. So the probability of black is 4 out of 12. Probability of not black is 8 out of 12, so it's a 4 to 8 ratio, or 1 to 2 if you write it in the lowest terms. Fairly straightforward idea there. And again, I go through more examples. Okay, again, another odds in favor. Now this is odds in favor of a red or a black. So first of all, we figure out the probability of red or black. Then we figure out the probability of not red or black. And then we figure out the odds. And it's always best to go that way. If you always go back to probabilities, you'll never go wrong with any odds questions. So if they give you odds, figure out the probabilities. If they give you probabilities, figure out the probability and its complement, and then do final answer and odds. Odds are always going to be final answers, or get rid of them and turn them into probabilities as soon as you can. That's the easiest way to do it. Anyway, here, odds in favor of picking a red or black sock. Well. The probability of red or black is going to be 3 out of 12 plus 4 out of 12 or 7 out of 12. I just did a quick little bit of work there. Probability of not getting a red or black, or in other words getting a white sock, is going to be 5 out of 12 or, you know, you take the 7 out of 12 for the probability of red or black and you go 1 minus 7 out of 12 to get the complement, not red or black, and you get 5 out of 12. Okay, straightforward, simple idea. Odds in favor, okay, red or black, so red or black go here, 7 over 12. 5 over 12, not red or black, go here. And again, the 12s cancel. We're looking at the numerator, 7 to 5. And of course, they don't reduce, so it's 7 to 5. Okay, now here's an odds against. This is a good way to illustrate the odds against formula. It's just flipped. Okay, the order's mis me mis mixed around. So it's the probability of some, or so it's the number of ways in which something could not happen versus the number of ways in which it could happen. So, so for odds 4, it's happen, dot, dot, not happen. For odds against, it's not happen, dot, dot, happen. I know that's not a proper way to talk about a semicolon, but anyway, it is what it is. Okay, so here, what are the odds against picking a red or black sock? So obviously I have to figure out the probability of red or black, which I have, the probability of not red or black, which is 5 out of 12, and then, of course, remember those two have to add up to 12, okay? Um, whether you figure out the probability of red or black and then go 1 minus to get the probability of not red or black, or whether you do them separately, it doesn't make a difference. In this case, it's easy because you have simple socks that are rolling around in a drawer. For odds against, remember, it's not happening versus happening, okay? So not red or black, 5 out of 12. Red or black, 7 out of 12. Again, it's not versus happening, 5 to 7, 5 to 7. And you'll see it's a flip from this 7 to 5. So the odds in favor of a red or black sock and the odds against a red or a black sock because it's the same thing as just a reversal of the two. So it's just another way to communicate it. Here's another odds against of picking a white sock. Okay, so we figure out the probability of white, which is 5 out of 12. The probability of not white or W primed is going to be 1 minus 5 out of 12 or 7 out of 12. We, again, it's odds against white. So we go white is on the right hand side and uh, not white is on the left, or not happening versus happening. 7 out of 12 and 5 out of 12 is 7 to 5. Strangely enough, the probability of odds in favor of picking a red or black and the odds against picking a white are exactly the same thing because it's exactly the same thing. Okay, anyway, go back over, think about it, look at it a little bit. There's another really interesting thing that happens with probabilities as well, and that is if you have a probability, like in this case, 5 to 7, like our probability of picking a white sock, Okay, odds in favor of picking a white sock. If you have that scenario of five to seven, the beauty is, is you can figure the probability just like that. What you have when you have five, that's happening, seven, not happening, you've got everything there, which means if five is happening, five is your numerator, that's NA, and then the denominator is gonna be these two guys added up, okay, because those are all the occurrences that could possibly happen. So you'll notice that, it, that, that the probability of picking a white sock, because it's the odds in favor of white socks, and there's white socks as the first part, 5, that's going to be the numerator. The denominator is going to be 5 plus 7. That's everything. So 5 out of 12. So it's easy to convert back and forth between odds 
and probability. In fact, I think it's even easier to convert from odds to probabilities, as long as you don't get the directions mis mixed up. So take, pay close attention to that. Lastly, a few more examples. Um, if the probability of it raining tomorrow is 4 to 13, then we know the probability of it not raining is going to be 1 minus 4 over 13, or 9 over 13. Okay, so we have it there, the probability of raining, probability of not raining. Notice I didn't even look at what the question was, because I knew if I'm going to do odds, I need the probability of it happening and the probability of it not happening. Okay, in this case, what are the odds in favor of, its, of it raining? So raining versus not raining. Raining is 4 to 3. Probability of raining is 4, sorry, 4 to 13. Probability of raining is 4 to 13. Probability of not raining is 9 to 13. So odds in favor of rain, I should put up rain, make sure you guys fix that too, is probability of rain, 4 out of 13. And probability of not raining, 9 out of 13. Again, I jumped from this, 4 to 13, 9 out of 13 to 4 to 9. And then, of course, writing it in the lowest terms. Odds against, in this case, rain. Odds against raining. Odds against rain. Again, we just flip-flop them. Or we put 9 over 13, 4 over 13, oops, 13, reduce, and then, of course, write in lowest terms for the ratio. Okay. We can also express probabilities, of course, as decimals and percentages, so we have to be sensitive to that idea. In this case, you're not really supposed to be using decimals, so again, we're going to have to get used to converting ratios into whole number values. Okay, so here, the probability of it raining is 0.7. We want to know the odds against raining. Okay, so the probability of rain is 0.7. The probability of it not raining is 0.3. Okay, that being the case, we have all that we need in order to do this. It's odds against raining. Odds against raining means we put R primed first. We put R second or rain second, not raining first. Again, it's not happening versus happening. We put the 0.3 and the 0.7, and of course, we have to write that ratio using no decimal places for form purposes. So it's a 3 to 7 ratio. And again, the whole numbers are just another way of us quantifying and be able to count on our fingers and toes and things like that so we can actually visualize the probability of something happening versus not happening or how, how much more likely. In this case, it's, you know, two and a third times greater. It's not two and a third times greater. Maybe it is. Two and a third. Yeah, two and a third times greater um, for it to not happen versus happen. Or in this, sorry, in this case, for it to happen versus not happen. So it's two and a third times more likely to have it be rain versus not raining. Okay, and you can reduce it to that idea, but most people like this 3 to 7 ratio because it looks like it's about twice and a little bit more. Okay, uh, the odds of a student passing the data management course are 12 to 1. Okay, so that's an odds. All right, so we have to be able to turn that into probability, go back and forth. In this case, the first thing I'm going to do if I see odds and I want to do any work with it is I turn it into a probability. But anyway, I'll get to that in a second. It says, what's the probability that a student will pass the course? Odds of a student passing the course. Now, if it says odds, it's assuming odds in favor, okay? So I know this is odds in favor, which means this is passing right here, 12, and this is not passing, 1, which is good because, of course, you know, you'd like to be able to pass the course. So that being the case, it's 12 times more likely for someone to pass than not pass. Now I want to use this to figure out the probability of passing and then the probability of not passing as well, okay? So what's the probability of passing? It's going to be 12, okay? That happens for the first part, 12. Okay, over a total of 12 plus 1, 13. So it's really easy to go from odds. You look at either the, which one, which side you want, whether it happens or not happens. Okay, and then use that, and then the denominator is always the two added up together. Okay, so the probability of passing is 12 of 13. This is one that uses a little bit of word, sort of backward writing, and sometimes people mess things up based on how they ask questions and what we're looking for and so on. So try not to get discombobulated that way. The odds of Mr. Henley being absent tomorrow are 2 to 19. Okay, odds, always assumed in favor. I've got it in pink there, in favor. When I don't write in favor or against, it's always assumed in favor. Odds in favor, being absent. So this is me being absent, not absent. Okay, what's the probability against? Now, we don't usually do probability against. Okay, but you do have to think a little bit laterally. Probability against Mr. Henley being absent. If it's against me being absent, then it means what's the, really the probability of me being present? Okay, we know that, of course, absent is the two. Not absent or present is the 19. Okay, so the probability of being absent is 2 out of 21. The probability of not being absent is 19 out of 21. The probability of not absent, okay, is, 12, is 19 out of 21. 
Okay, that's really what we're looking at. I mean, being not absent or I guess present or doing something else, who knows? Okay, maybe at a sports event or something like that. Okay, so that's that, a little bit about odds. And of course, you've got homework. So we'll get to work on that.